particulate nature of matter is a topic that we are going to discuss uh, in this lesson concentrate there is no calculation question in this topic it is explanation question all through and maybe state question so uh, we may not meet with any calculation question here so particulate nature of matter there are two terms there we have the term particulate and we have the term matter we know th what is matter mm, particulate is a term that is derived from the word particles and we know that particles uh, refers to small or tiny objects we call them particles when somebody tells you that look at this particle uh, that person has actually insulted you you are not a particle um, but if you uh, are doing nothing like a particle then you deserve to be called a particle so I'm saying this particulate nature of matter it is a topic that is going to explain to us all through that matter exists as particle or in small uh, forms look at this introduction huh? matter is anything that occupies space and has mass I was not supposed to tell you that because you know it matter is not continuous but it is made up of every uh, of very tiny particles hence participate in the nature of matter uh, now let's define the term our topic composed of particulate nature of matter therefore refers to the existence of matter in a very small particles existence of matter in very tiny particles that is what we mean by uh, particulate nature of matter we have three states of matter and you know this we have liquids solids and gas whether it belongs to any of the three states uh, matter exists in very tiny particles um, let's get there how do you know that matter exists in tiny particles we have two ways for solids and for liquids uh, the mountain that you see that looks very huge that mountain is made up of very tiny particles that rock that stone that you see it very big we can crush it and then we get very tiny particles like dust particles the piece of chalk your teacher uses um, is made up of tiny particles that's why at the end of the day I, the teacher will not be having the piece of chalk but there will be some dust down the board so every uh, object is made up of tiny particles every matter is made up of tiny particles in our case today which is the case of many i uh, most of the course books they use this they use a piece of paper like the one you are seeing here it is uh, maybe an a4 size piece you divide by two you uh, you have this one of them you pick it you divide by two you get the other one here you pick this again you divide by two you get this you pick one of the pieces the process will continue until you have very tiny a piece of paper that even your fingers find it difficult to have it in your fingers yeah you see to try to to have it it is very um tiny the process can continue it's only that your fingers cannot divide it anymore your fingers cannot cut it anymore this enables you to make a conclusion that matter is made up of tiny particles yes uh, we can also use liquid we pick uh, potassium permanganate solution you put them in a beaker you add water you will see um, a, a purple a deep purple color you can add water as the purple color fades away until it reaches a point where even there will be no purple color meaning the tiny particles of potassium permanganate as a uh, or gets diluted within the spaces of the liquid that is the water you are using to dilute it you can do it in the, in, in this manner um, to make it more sensible have several beakers the first beaker fill it with deep blue i mean a, a, a deep purple potassium permanganate solution divide by two to the next speaker add water to the brim divide by two to the next speaker the process will continue the color keeps on fading until the last one will be just colorless like uh, pure water 
but the particles of potassium by manganate uh, will have simply diffused inside. But in the first case, they look so much uh, purple. But this tells you that now uh, matter is made up of tiny particles. That's why at the end it has diffused through the water. You cannot even see it. Yet it is there. Let me ask you a question here, then I answer you immediately. Explain why it is possible to dissolve water, a uh, uh, sugar in water without any noticeable increase in volume of water. Explain why it is possible to dissolve sugar in water without any noticeable increase in volume of water. This is what you always do at home. You fill tea to the uh, brim of the gap, you add six spoons of sugar, but still you, uh, you realize that the tea has not spilled outside. This is what is there. The sugar dissolves by occupying the spaces within the water molecules. Remember, in the molecular spaces, you've heard of this, the distance between one molecule and the other molecule in liquid or in any other matter, we call it in the molecular spaces or in the molecular distance. Now, the sugar will dissolve by occupying those spaces. When all the spaces has been occupied, that particular solution is said to be saturated solution. Yes, and uh, the explanation is here. If you have not heard me very well, it is just there. Now, let's look at what we call Brownian motion. Brownian motion. Uh, this uh, particular concept was uh, designed and brought up by somebody by the name Brown. That's why he called it Brownian motion. It refers to the random movement of liquid and gas particles. Remember, we have three states of matter, but Brownian motion only involves liquid and gas particles. I will give you the reason. The solid particles are fixed. They don't move. So they don't participate in Brownian motion. Mm, random movement of liquid and gas particles. You know, solid cannot participate in this. Their particles or their molecules are held fixed. They just vibrate within a fixed position. They don't move. Uh, let's see how we can demonstrate Brownian motion in liquids and in gases. Uh, we can use chalk dust or uh, pollen crates. When you look at the water in a beaker, uh, because the particles of water are not visible, your eyes cannot see. It cannot see the a random movement of uh, water particles. It cannot see. Actually, the process is taking place. The particles of water are moving randomly, aimlessly, carelessly, on the surface of water, or even inside the, the water. But your eyes cannot see. Unless we use a very light particle, we put it on the surface of water, so that as the water particles are moving, it ends up moving or hitting or uh, bombarding or colliding with the particle you have placed on the surface of water. We use chalk dust because they are light and they are visible. We use um, pollen grains because they are light and they are visible. Though they are very small, we are going to use uh, a lens or a microscope for the enlargement. Now, when you look, uh, okay, the transparent lid here, just look at the diagram. Though we have included many things, including the flame, which is not necessary. But as long as you have placed, the, uh, you have sprinkled particles that can float on the surface of water, you use a hand lens or a microscope. You can simply see them moving randomly. Hmm? This one, they have used, uh, th 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 this one is in air. Yeah, the, the space that you are uh, like here right now, the uh, molecules or the particles of air are moving randomly, but you cannot see it because air is uh, scalarless. But once we use smoke particles, you see the smoke particles moving randomly. It is not the smoke uh, particles that move randomly. It is the smoke particles that are being bombarded. The invisible air particles is colliding with the smoke particles. That's why you see the smoke particles moving in random direction. The same thing happens when you put some light particles on the surface of water. 
in this case the uh, we use small, we use smoke particles f uh, because of two reasons they are light and they are visible that's why we use smoke particles the role of the microscope is to enlarge the particles to be seen and the converging lens is to converge whatever you want to see now you can be asked why is uh, the oh okay why what you see well, what you see is a, a random movement of smoke particles because it collides randomly with invisible air particles so actually even at home this will look strange to some of you but to some of you it's the reality um there are houses made of mud and you have to sweep in the morning or in the or any time eh? uh, or even classrooms there are classrooms in some uh, uh, regions made of mud so you have to sprinkle water then you sweep while you are sweeping you are disturbing the dust and when you disturb the dust from the ground now they have to get bombarded by the invisible air particles and when there is a light from the window that gets to the room you will see what you will see the dust moving randomly it's not the wheel of the dust to move they are being bombarded by the invisible air particles that is the point uh unless of course is used to to check uh to enlarge the particles mm. That is it. So you I am mingi, but I will still ask you questions concerning that. Uh, questions like uh, why is dust, or why are dust moving in air? Yet the density of dust is greater than that of air. Question that you need to ask yourself. Let's look at the kinetic theory of matter. And uh, you know, when we are dealing with kinetic theory of matter, we all know that uh, matter has three states solids liquids and gases mm. so uh, kinetic theory of matter we are going to continue from you, you see now what we have what we had said concerning the brownian motion constitute the kinetic theory of matter uh, so kinetic theory of matter states that matter is made up of tiny particles which are in continuous random motion matter is made up of tiny particles which are in continuous random motion and uh, we are going to see one by one starting with solids liquids and gases solids i've given you the diagram here so look at how it they are the particles these are the particles the one you see in circular form they are the particles uh, you are also allowed to call them molecules yeah you can call them molecules uh, particles are closely packed in an organized manner and in a fixed position as you can see uh, particles in solid do not move randomly but instead vibrate about the fixed positions that one is known as vibratory motion because of very strong in the molecular force of attraction the cohesive force this explains why solids have fixed volume and definite shape uh, liquids liquids is um, somehow different from the solid uh, particles in liquids are not closely fixed as in solids but move about randomly that's the brownian motion now you know wh when we were dealing with brownian motion we say that solids do not experience brownian motion this is because the in the molecular forces in liquids are weaker than those in solids the same reason explain why liquids have no fixed shape but assume the shape of the container the in the molecular forces in liquids is stronger than in gases uh, but of course weaker than those of the solid uh, so, so a liquid actually have fixed volume you can measure the volume of a liquid but not gas gases you can see that they are ran uh, randomly placed uh -huh. particles in gases are further apart and have an increased random motion compared to liquid particles this is because of very weak in the molecular forces in gases particles as compared to liquids and solids um so the uh, now gases have 
no definite shape and volume. The only thing they have definite is mass. You cannot measure the volume or the shape. You cannot tell the shape of a, a gas. That is it. Mm, now, I want to take you back to classics and I, whatever I've given you there is, um, you know, terminologies of the changes of state. Melting, evaporation, condensation, freezing, sublimation, deposition. So, um, I cannot tell you about melting, evaporation, condensation and freezing because it's something that you know. Sublimation is the process by which a solid changes to gas directly without passing the liquid state. Yes. Um, you see, for example, now when you hit water, let me just use an example of water to explain something first. When you hit water, it will melt at zero. That is the ice, w water in form of ice, melt at zero degrees Celsius. And after melting, you know, some of you are wondering, how can water melt? Water exists in three states. So when I say water melt, know that it is the ice. Uh, it melt at zero degrees Celsius. Then between zero and the boiling point is 100 degrees Celsius. Now, there are some substances whereby the temperature between the melting and boiling is negligible. It is too small to be noticed. Then it undergoes sublimation. Deposition is the opposite of sublimation. But still, uh, all of them, when it changes from solid to gas or gas to solid di directly, um, we call all of them deposition. But to be specific, I, I mean, we, we call all of them sublimation. But to be specific, from gas directly to solid is deposition as solid is being deposited yes uh i think this is our last concept diffusion in this topic diffusion then i give you good questions about the topic diffusion uh, it refers to the process by which particles spread from a region of high concentration to a region of low concentration this one, even in biology, you will study about diffusion, osmosis, and active transport. Uh, noticeable diffusion takes place in liquids and gases due to their continuous random motion. In most cases, it takes place in solid. I mean, liquids and gases. Mm, in solids, it takes place, but rarely. Not so much often, like. Um, the one that undergoes Brownian motion. Uh, in liquids, it's very simple. You can put a copper two sulfate in one corner using a straw. Uh, let me just show you here. You use a straw like this one. You place it down. Then you don't stir. Allow them to diffuse. After some time, the whole of the contents in the beaker will be blue solution. Why? They have diffused. They have diffused. Let me say this as so as I uh, or uh, as I'm explaining this. Uh, temperature increases the rate of diffusion. When we increase temperature, the rate at which the blue solution uh, takes over the beaker will be very fast. Why? Because temperature increases the kinetic energy of the particles hence they diffuse or they move very fast that is it in gases there are many ways we can uh, demonstrate in gases look at what we have there we have a bromine gas and remember bromine is um, a brown gas then we have the air the normal air which is colorless then when they are being placed together like this eh? um, after some time you will see the bromine gas in the other gas jar. Why? They will have diffused. Yes. And when you use, when you increase the temperature, the process takes place very fast. The process of diffusion will take place very fast. Um, when you compare diffusion in the three states of matter, it takes place very fast in gases. Simply because of the following three reasons. Gases have a low density. Gases have a high kinetic energy. Gases have very weak cohesive force that is holding the gas particles together. That is the point. Um, so there are two factors that affect diffusion in gases or even in liquids. Number one is, as I've said, temperature. Number two is the density 
of the diffusing particles. Um, I will use this diagram to explain to you. Uh, we have cotton wool soaked in a concentrated ammonia solution, meaning they contain ammonia gas that will diffuse. This other one has uh, cotton wool soaked in concentrated hydrochloric acid, meaning what? It has hydrogen chloride gas or hydrochloric acid gas, wi which will uh, diffuse towards this side. It will diffuse towards uh, the other one will diffuse from this side. So ammonia is diffusing towards where we have hydrogen chloride gas. Hydrogen chloride gas will also diffuse towards where we have ammonia. Now let me you use the, uh, this simple illustration. Somebody is standing at the coal post of the other one, which is uh, 100 meters away, and another person is standing on the other coal post. Then, in between you is 100 meters. Then you are, you are told to run towards each other. Then the other person meets you when you have just run 20 meters from where you are starting point. Meaning the other person has just run 80 meters. So, uh, use of common sense. Who is running very fast or who is slow? Of course, you are the slow because you have just gone 20 meters. So it's like this one. Just, just, just to look at this. Eh? Uh, you know, when ammonia and hydrogen chloride gas or hydrochloric acid gas meet, they react and they form a white deposit. This white deposit is called ammonium chloride. Later on, when you learn uh, about chemical uh, formulas or um, compounds or chemicals reacting, you will know it is called ammonium chloride. Now look at this. It is formed uh, near hydrogen chloride, uh, I, I mean hydrogen chloride gas. Why? It is the one that diffuses slowly because it is denser than ammonia. That is it. So, uh, gases have different rates of diffusion depending on their densities or their relative masses. A gas with a higher density has a heavier particles and therefore its uh, rate of diffusion is lower than uh, the gas with a lower density. Yes. So that is it. Uh, there are questions here which um, they are just there for you to think. A question and the answer. But of course I will give you questions that you will write. And uh, I have told you the easiest way is when you see it, you post a, s a video, you write the questions. When you are done, move, allow the video to move on. Uh, you write the questions as we are moving on. Uh, state and explain the observations made after some time. Of course, we have said a white deposit is formed near the cotton wool soaked in the concentrated hydrochloric acid. Ammonia gas is less dense and has a light particles. It will diffuse faster than the hydrochloric gas, which is dense. On the diagram shows the observation. If the experiment was performed at a high temperature, will you expect... On the diagram show the... Okay, this is a different question. Eh? Th this one, I in LSA, I do. In fact, it is a, it's a lost question. Uh, if the experiment was performed at a high temperature, will you expect it to take longer or shorter time to form a white deposit? Explain. Of course, when we increase the temperature, it will take a shorter time because kinetic energy in is increased. That in increases um, the rate of diffusion. Yes. Uh, look, look at this now. We have the porous uh, materials here. We have this container. You, you, you see this container? This container performs a very important role as you are supplying a gas here maybe hydrogen gas eh? without this container it has not been uh, okay it's it, it's a beaker I, it's named here it's an inverted beaker without it when you supply hydrogen gas the hydrogen gas will not concentrate it will just move because it is less dense but with a big inverted beaker it will ensure that it concentrates hydrogen gas there so they will diffuse through the porous material uh, porous means it, uh, it has so small holes that can allow gas to get in. So the gas will get, or will the hydrogen gas will diffuse in inside here. Then they will, of course, push the air out. That's why you are seeing some particles. And when you remove the beaker, the hydrogen gas diffuses out, and uh, you will see the water rising eh? ah, to occupy the space that the hydrogen gas has left by diffusing outside through the porous uh, material or the porous uh, uh, junction here. Now, that is uh, definitely through porous materials. 
and it, it doesn't have a lot of things to talk. Now note this, the BK is used to confine the hydrogen gas, I think I've said this, around the porous, but it is obvious that the air is denser than hydrogen gas, so the hydrogen gas will rise up, no, pr no problem with that. Uh, you can still, I have said, you can take a book and uh, you know I have given you many slides, you can try it just your notes and anything that you think that you don't know. I'm also giving you a revision exercise. Those are three questions. Uh, you post the video, you copy the questions, we move to the next slide. Uh -huh. Then you do it. You c if you want to refer, refer to what we have said earlier. All of them are there. Unless maybe it's an explanation question. I'm giving you from 4 to question 9 again. You simply post the video, you put the full screen. You know, so, so some of you don't know how to put the full screen. Just put the full screen, mm, copy these questions. Uh, for example, question 7. Explain why solids are not compressible while gases are. <laughs> Just explain. You know, I, I, I will not do it for you. But if you find that there is a question, you cannot do it. You make a comment there by saying question 6. What factor determines the state of matter? Then you tell me. What factor? You see, Jui, I will answer you immediately. As I see that uh, comment there. Um, also, from question 10 to 11, you post the video, enlarge the screen, copy the questions, and I know everything is going to be well. Uh, 13 to 15, define division. Continue, just copy those questions. Those are very enough. The video itself, uh, the other side will take like 20 to 25 minutes. Then, uh, doing the questions will take another 30 minutes. So, it is one hour. Particulate nature of matter has or will take you just an hour. So it's the end. Question 15 was the end. Name and explain the factors that affect the rate of division in gases. Those are the things that you need to work with. And that is division. See you in Zamol expansion. God bless you.